me, you're not QBT. You know what it is, post up and take command, a special edition of the command post with your commander in chief, Louis T. We're talking mock draft and it's mock draft madness here on the Louis T network as I've got one, not one, but two, count them, two mock drafts for you for the Washington commanders. The first will be with trades. The second will be without trades. So uh, let me explain something to you real quick. I don't think we're going to be able to get out of 11. I don't think we're going to be able to move back because this draft, its strength is its depth, okay? It's not as top heavy. There are no quarterbacks that people are salivating over. There's a lot of talented players that you can get in the top 15, 20 of this draft. However, the real interest in this draft for teams is in the mid rounds, is the third, the fourth, the fifth, because that's where the depth starts to really show itself and that's where the real value is. And in order to move up in the draft, say from 16 to 11 or 15 to 11 or, you know, 19 to 11, you're going to have to give up some of that mid round capital where the depth is, where the real value is in this draft. I don't know if teams are willing to do that or not. Now, it's easy to say what you will or won't do when you're, you know, four days out from the draft. But when that clock hits, you're on the board and or, or another team's on the board and, and there's a player you really want there and there's an opportunity to go get him. Teams may say to hell with a third round or a fourth round pick. Let's go get this guy because he can help us win right now. But all in all, I don't know if teams are going to be as gung ho to move up. I think they're going to be a bit hesitant to move up in the draft because of what they're going to have to give up to get that done. And I think the value being in the mid rounds is going to put a, a bit of a pause on some of these teams from moving up. That said, if you're Washington, that should not stop you from getting active on the phones and trying to get back uh, maybe three, four, five, six, seven picks and, and get, you know, pick up a third, pick up a fourth. You know, you don't have a third right now. You don't have a fifth right now. These should be rounds where you should be looking to acquire draft capital. So moving back a few spots, if you're Washington, will allow you to do that. Um, we'll see what happens, but this is my draft with trades, one in particular for Washington that nets them exactly what they need to really fulfill this draft in 2022. So without any further ado, your Washington commanders are now officially on the clock in the 2022 NFL draft. And with their first pick, they... <laughs> have made a trade. And this trade is with the New Orleans Saints. So what you see in front of you is a trade for the 11th selection. Saints get the 11th pick in the draft. The Washington Commanders were set to select the player that the Saints really coveted. Washington told them as much when they picked up the phone. And so the Saints had no choice but to come up. Had they not come up, Washington would have selected the player that the Saints really wanted at 16. So, um... You're going to find out who that player is during my mock draft without trades. However, um, what Washington got in return for moving back five spots, we swap ones, of course. Washington goes back from 11 to 16. Uh, they also get a third round pick from the Saints, 98th overall, and they also get a fifth rounder, 161st overall in this draft. So the two rounds in which Washington did not have a selection, they do have selections now. So Washington has a selection in every single round of the draft due to this trade, and then two seventh rounders to round out the draft to give them a total of eight picks now. So once again, recapping the trade, Saints get number 11 overall, Washington gets 16, 98, and 161 from the New Orleans Saints. And with that first pick, 16th overall, in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select... You guessed it, Chris Olave, wide receiver, the Ohio State University. Um, the trade back really puts you in a great spot to snag Chris Olave. Um, 11 for a lot of people seems a bit early. I, I really personally don't care where they take him. Um, just get him if that's the guy that you want. Uh, you move back. Some of the guys that you were interested in are no longer on the board, but that's fine. You had a contingency plan, which was Chris Olave. It comes to fruition. You pick up more draft capital. You're smiling right now if you're Washington because you get the receiver and you pick up additional picks that will allow you to really fill out your draft 
and come away feeling like you filled multiple holes on this roster. So Chris Olave gives you the perfect compliment to Terry McLaurin in terms of production, a guy that's going to come in immediately. This isn't one of those guys like an AGG or a Deami Brown where you draft and you got to hope that this guy gets it. This guy's not going to have to come in here right away um, and, and, and be the star, right? Like those other two guys needed to come in here and we didn't, I didn't want Deami Brown's production, but we needed it. Guys got injured. Same thing with AGG. I didn't want AGG's production year one. I didn't want to have to need it. I, I wanted him to be able to offer it up. And if we got it, great. But we needed it. We didn't get it. We needed it from Deami Brown last year. We didn't get it. This year, we're hoping that Curtis Samuel stays healthy. Never, ever trust a man with two first names. Then we won't need production from Chris Olave. But it, it sure is nice to know that if we put him out on the football field, he's a guy that's going to come in ready to go, ready to work, and, and, and give Terry some help opposite um, on the other side. So Washington gets a much-needed help at receiver. Now we move on to the next pick for the Washington Commanders, second round, 47th overall. Let's take a look at what the Commanders got done. So with the 47th pick in the 2022 NFL draft, the Washington Commanders select safety Jaquan Brisket, uh, Brisker, excuse me, out of Penn State. So uh, Jaquan Brisker is a guy that I think Washington is super um, interested in. They've met with him on multiple occasions, including the combine and in a personal uh, visit, one of their 30 uh, visits that they were allowed to have. He was one of those visits. I think they view him as the quintessential Buffalo nickel that they keep talking about that they want to have. We've already got a guy that can fill that void. So if we don't get a guy to fill that void, you've still got Cam Curl who filled it beautifully in his rookie season. But I think they want to move Cam Curl around the football field. Don't want to relegate him to just, you know, Buffalo nickel duty. So um, ja Jaquan Br Brisket comes in. And he, that's essentially what he did at Penn State was he played right around the line of scrimmage, played over the slot, played in coverage. So uh, I think they look at him as a physical guy. I, I had issues with him and his physicality. If you're a member of the mob, I talked about his lack of physicality, but I was told that he had a shoulder injury. And, and, and thinking about it now, I, I remember watching the film. I think the first game of the season against Wisconsin, he left the game for about a good, you know, maybe I'd say about a, uh, maybe a quarter. And then he returned and he was favoring his shoulder and that never healed all season long. So that took away some of the physicality. So you got to go back to 2020 if you're looking for the physicality that Jaquan Brisket brings to the uh, table. And so I I'm more intrigued by him after seeing the physicality that uh, that lacked on tape for, for me in 2021. So um, that answered some of the questions that I had with him because I told you his coverage ability is, is solid. So uh, solid pick for Washington. They get their man at 47. Now we move on to the pick, one of the first picks they got in the deal with the Saints, 98 overall, their third round pick now. Remember, they did not have one coming into the draft. They have one now. Let's see what Washington did at 98. This is by far and away my favorite tight end in the draft with the 98th overall selection. In the 2022 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select Jeremy Ruckert, tight end, the Ohio State University. I love Jeremy Ruckert. He has Zach Ertz written all over him, and he is a dominant blocker in the run game already. Uh, he's a guy that comes in, can, can win. I don't think he got enough opportunities at Ohio State. I don't think they utilized the tight end position as much as they could have. Uh, this guy is, is a really good athlete tremendous hands and he just does everything to the highest ability I, I just I love Jeremy Ruckert remember I was drooling over this kid pause last year when I thought he was coming out remember he had the big playoff game against Clemson when he had the two touchdown grabs but he decided to go back to school and and, and it, you know what that's turned out to be a good thing for him he set career highs and receptions and yards so um, I like Jeremy Ruckert probably more so than most I don't know if he will be around if we don't have this third round pick. So th it's great that we got the third rounder so that we can ensure that we can get our hands on Jeremy Ruckert uh, because I'm not sure that he'll be there at 113. 
in the fourth round when we originally were supposed to select. Speaking of 113, fourth round, that's our next selection, and this is our next draft pick. With the 113th overall selection in the fourth round of the 2022 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select JoJo Doman, linebacker, Nebraska. This is a guy that, to me, is the quintessential Buffalo nickel. If you're looking for a Ron Rivera pick, here it is. This is the kind of player that Ron Rivera has drafted throughout his career repeatedly the ex safety that converts to linebacker that comes to the NFL and is able to be a chess piece. He did it with Thomas Davis. He did it with Shaq Thompson. He's doing it again here with Jojo Doman. This is a guy that is a tremendous athlete plays over the slot. You see him doing it on tape as a big nickel. Okay. Like literally he was a big nickel at Nebraska. You can blitz him off the edge. He can drop. He can drop into space. He's very comfortable. There's a great uh, play made against Ohio State and their quarterback, um, C.J. Stroud, uh, where he literally is in coverage. Stroud tries to force it on the sidelines, and, and JoJo Doman steps in front of it and picks it off. It's a beautiful play. It's the kind of play that gets you excited when you talk about a linebacker that has coverage ability. So uh, this is a guy that, to me, fits the Ron Rivera mold of an ex safety turn linebacker that has versatility that comes into the league and has tremendous coverage ability. That's what Jojo Doman is. That's what you get here in the fourth round. I think it's a really good addition to the football team. As we move on, this is the final pick that we got in that draft trade with the New Orleans Saints fifth round 161st overall. Let's see what Washington decides to do with that pick. So Ty Davis Price is the selection with the uh, 161st pick overall in the 2022 NFL Draft. The Washington Commanders select Ty Davis Price, running back, LSU. So this is another guy that Washington was interested in during the pre-draft process. They met with him on several occasions. Uh, they met with him at the uh, combine. They met with him in a private workout. Um, they had a visit with him. So they are very interested in uh, Ty Davis Price. And this is a guy that was a part of a like a three-headed backfield at LSU at one point when they won the national championship. Uh, he was the third back in that group. Uh, he continued to progress, was the second back that next year. And then last year, he was the lead back in LSU's program. However, he still split time. So he still has a ton of tread left on the tires. He's a big back at six foot, 210. Um, he, can, he can run. He's a 4'4 guy. So there's a lot to like here with Ty Davis Price. He's physical. Um, there's a lot to like, but there's also some things he's got to clean up. You know, one of those things is he can put the ball on the carpet. Okay, he is a guy that also needs to be a little bit better at using patience to allow things to develop. But when you talk about, you know, having all of the skill sets that you're looking for, Ty Davis Price has them. They're clearly interested, which is why they had visits with him. I think this is a guy that they will target in the later rounds. This fifth round pick allows them to not have to press and not have to cross their fingers and hope that he's available in the sixth. Don't have to be pressured into maybe pulling the trigger on a different running back or this one in particular in the fourth, you're able to just kind of ah, exhale, take your time and get good value at the running back position, which is what this is for Ty Davis price. Clearly Washington is interested in upgrading the running back position, which is why they've brought in some of the top backs in this draft class, but I don't think they're going to do it early. This is when they decide to take care of it here in the fifth round. Ty Davis price is the selection so we move on now to the final three picks these were original picks that washington was going to have whether they made a trade or not we start with the first of these last three picks in the sixth round 189th overall so with the 189th pick overall in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select defensive tackle Kalia Davis out of Central Florida. This is a guy that I'm extremely excited about. Now, um, a couple of the guys, JoJo Doman, 
uh, is a guy that had an ACL tear, you know, a couple of years ago, has dealt with some injuries, but he's healthy. This is a guy coming off of an ACL tear, tore his ACL earlier this season. So um, that's why he's here. If he is fully healthy, he's not here in the sixth round. This is what I call getting value back end of the draft, okay? This is a, a fourth or a third round type of player that you're getting in the sixth because he's coming off of an ACL injury. So take advantage. And I don't look at ACLs or Achilles tears anymore the way that I used to. These guys are coming back from these things faster and faster and stronger and stronger than ever. So I don't worry about a guy. We, we see that, you know, Jamison Williams, we just watched him play in the national championship game and tear his ACL. The man is projected to be ready potentially for training camp, not for week one, for training camp. Okay, these guys, and again, everybody's different. These guys are coming back faster and faster from these injuries. So for me, when I hear that a guy tore his ACL, I'm like, okay, so what? Um, is this, did he have surgery? Did the surgery go well? If, if you go check and check, then okay, what do I sign? This is a guy where you're getting extreme value back into the draft to replace Tim Settle. He's got Tim Settle's quickness. He's got the ability to penetrate, get into the backfield. He's a disruptor, a natural disruptor. He's still a puppy. Okay, this kid has no idea what he's doing. Okay, this is a former linebacker that converted to defensive tackle. So he's got athleticism, but he's still filling out his frame. He can get a little bit bigger, not the biggest guy in the world, but he's still learning the defensive tackle position. He's like a big slab of clay. And I don't know if I trust our defensive line coach to get the most out of him or not, but I do like the fact that this guy has a ton of potential and it just needs to be unlocked. And the quickness and the physical strength and gifts that he has, you can't teach either you have them or you don't. He does. And so I'm excited about the value Washington is getting here in the sixth round at a position of need with Kalia Davis, defensive tackle out of Central Florida. So now we go to our seventh rounders. We've got two, the first of which is 230th overall. Washington selects. With the 230th pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select cornerback Dakobe Durant out of South Carolina State. So I've talked about needing a nickel corner so bad in this defense, and I don't know if they're going to give Danny Johnson a chance or not. I'd love to see Danny get an opportunity. I think he made the most of that opportunity last year, and I'd like to see him get a shot. However, if they decide to go in a different direction, this is the kind of guy you could go in that direction with. He's, he's a diminutive guy at 5'10", about a buck 80, so he's not a big guy at all. But, man, is he feisty as the day is long. He'll fight anybody tooth and nail. Love his quickness, love his feet, love his ability to get his hands on the football. He was the MEAC player of the year this past year, so this guy was dominant for South Carolina State. At times, he will not turn and locate the football. That's something that, you know, is a pet peeve of mine, but... The vast majority of the time, he's looking for the football. But there are some times where he gets caught face guarding. I'll need him to clean that up. But from a technical standpoint, I love his quickness. I love his ability to stop, change directions, drive, you know, plant and drive downhill. Love his ability to um, <clears throat> be able to stay in phase with receivers, stay in the hip pocket. Um, he's got a burst. So that makeup speed on a shallow cross where he might have gotten picked if that ball's late, he's one of those guys that can jump in front of it. There's a lot to like here with the Kobe Durant in the seventh round as a small school guy that you expect to be able to transition well, ran a 4-3 in some change at the combine, and he was a combine invite. So that lets you know the guy is super talented. Really like this selection for Washington. Back into the draft, another position that needed depth. You're getting it here with the Kobe Durant. So we get to our final selection, our eighth and final selection in the 2022, uh, 2022 NFL Draft, which is... With the 239th selection in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select Cordell Volson, offensive lineman, North Dakota State. So... This is a guy that, and, and I think whatever offensive lineman we select, and I expect us to take one in the draft, whether we tr have a trade or we only have six selections, 
I think one of those six selections will be an offensive lineman at some point. And I think that offensive lineman, whomever he is, will have versatility to be able to play both tackle and guard. I think that's going to be the prerequisite for whoever is drafted as an offensive lineman for this team. Cordell Bolson can play both tackle and guard. He's more suited to play guard at the NFL level, but in a pinch, he can go outside and play tackle. And I think that's something that will endear him to this staff and make him the eighth and final selection of the 2022 NFL draft for the Washington Commanders. Gives you a little bit of depth there. Probably won't make the uh, original 53-man roster. They'll continue to work with him. No telling what will happen injury-wise and if he'll have to be ready. However, it'll be good to have another body. We we moved on from two guards this offseason, Brandon Sheriff and Eric Flowers. It's nice to add another body at a uh, guard, potentially in Cordell Volson to round out that offensive line group. Remember, we already went out and signed a guard this offseason as well in Andrew Norwell from the Jacksonville Jaguars. So uh, you, you, you move on from two, you replace those two with a free agent and a draft pick to round out this draft. So let's review what was done by Washington in this draft. So eight selections due to the trade with the Saints. Saints come up to 11. Washington moves back, acquires 16, 98, and 161 from the New Orleans Saints. So here's what it looks like. With the 16th pick in the draft, Washington moves back, selects wide receiver Chris Olave. In the second round, Washington makes the 47th pick and takes safety Jaquan Brisker out of Penn State. In the third round, 98th overall, Washington takes tight end Jeremy Ruckert out of Ohio State. In the fourth round, Washington, 113th overall, takes linebacker JoJo Doman out of Nebraska. In the fifth round, 161st pick overall, Washington selects running back Ty Davis Price out of LSU. With the 189th pick in the sixth round, Washington selects defensive tackle Kalia Davis from Central Florida. That was the final of the three picks Washington got uh, in exchange for the 11th selection. Then in the seventh round, or excuse me, that was Washington's original sixth round pick. Uh, the 161st pick, which turned out to be running back Ty Davis Price, was the last pick gained in the Saints trade. Seventh round, 230th pick overall, cornerback Kobe Durant out of South Carolina State uh, is the selection, gives Washington an option at slot if they should choose to go in that direction. And then with their final pick, uh, 239th overall in the seventh round, Washington selects offensive lineman Cordell Volson out of North Dakota State. So... That's going to do it for my mock draft, eight picks. Tell me what you think. Leave it down in the comment section and uh, along with a sub and a like if you haven't already done so. And tell me what you think and what you would like to see this team do. What do you think they're going to do? What would you do? Leave it all in the comment section. Can't wait to read Bart Scott. Can't wait. We're getting ever so close to the NFL draft. Soon we won't have to mock what this team will do. We'll be able to actually have in front of us what they ultimately did. But until then, these mocks will have to do. Leave yours down in the comment section. Love to see what you did for this team in the upcoming draft. That's going to do it for me, your man, Louis T. I'm Ashton Burgundy and Gold. My Washington spirit will never die. Washington spirit will never fold. Until we meet again, you know what it is. Post up and take command, you guys. Make sure you check out the mock draft with out trades in addition to this one with trades. See you next time. Louis T.